Hi everyone, it's Athena here from Courage Coaching. Now the video I wanted to focus on today is about healing from childhood narcissistic abuse. From a lot of my previous videos, a lot of you have asked me how do I heal from this? Some of you may be in your kind of late 20s, 30s, 40s, and you're still struggling with. It's still something that is affecting you emotionally, mentally, you are suffering with anxiety, depression, all sorts of mental health issues. And unfortunately, that is because narcissistic parents do that. They damage us. They damage our core. And the start of the recovery journey is to grieve the loss of not having had healthy parents, because that is the most important thing of this journey. You have to be aware that you will never know what it would have been like to have had healthy parents because you didn't have healthy parents. You had parents who unfortunately were damaged themselves and they weren't able to give you what you needed as a young child. So I'm gonna go through a list of things that will help you on your recovery journey because that is what it is. It is a journey. This healing process is different for everybody depending on their individual circumstances. It might be that you only had one narcissistic parent. It might've just been your father or it might've just been your mother and Having a narcissistic mother, for instance, is a lot more damaging than just having um, a narcissistic father, but maybe a mother that was really nurturing. Or you might be somebody who has both parents that are narcissistic. So the first step in healing from narcissistic abuse in your childhood is fully accepting that your parents are never going to give you this love and approval that you so needed and even still need as an adult is the hardest part of the recovery journey. And the second most important part that goes with this is to start the grieving process. To grieve means that you sit there and talk with a trusted professional who is experienced in child abuse and narcissistic abuse. And you cry and scream and shout and let out all those emotions of deep sadness that you were not treated as you should have as a child, that you were not loved unconditionally, that your feelings were not validated as a child. This grieving process can take a long time and the pain and, and the emotions that you will experience are really deep, but they have to come to the surface because if you do not deal with these deep feelings of grief, then you will not be able to fully heal from the emotional abuse that you experienced you will constantly feel this, this sense of sadness and emptiness. And healing from narcissistic abuse doesn't mean that you can suddenly one day wake up and everything is fine. Healing from dysfunctional parental abuse isn't a piece of cake. Now, the second important part of healing from your childhood is that you have to acknowledge the fact that you were never able to fully express your feelings or you weren't ever fully allowed to feel your feelings because you were always focused on your parents' needs, on your parents' feelings, on keeping mom and dad happy, on making sure that mom and dad are not angry, or you were always focused on getting their approval, on doing things that would make them one day love you. So if you've spent your entire childhood feeling that way and seeking their approval and not feeling loved and not feeling whole, then how are you going to be able to look at yourself and, and say, right, this is how I feel. My feelings matter. I matter. What I say matters. What I feel matters. These are important things. So you really have to learn to start getting in touch with your own feelings. You have to work towards healing that little child inside of you that never got the love and attention that it so desperately deserved. And it is a journey to do that. It is about showing yourself self-compassion. When you're having a bad day and you feel really low and you're not confident, you don't feel that you deserve good things, pat yourself on the back and say, you will be okay. You deserve love. You deserve to be happy. Just because your parents told you that you didn't, it doesn't mean that you don't. You are a whole and worthy person. And talking to yourself a little bit every day in this way will help you feel stronger within yourself. It is very important to have self-compassion. Starting to heal 
means that you will recognize that certain boundaries that your parents were constantly crossing are not to be crossed anymore. You will start setting boundaries with your parents. And the thing is, when you first start doing this with your parents, when you first put your foot down and say, no, I will not be treated this way, they will retaliate. They will suddenly be like, oh, well, what's happened with you? Why are you so standoffish? Why are you saying no suddenly? When you start setting boundaries with your parents, they're not going to like it. The guilt tripping, for instance, might increase. The parent will be like, what's happened to my lovely, kind daughter or my lovely, caring son? Why are you treating me this way? Why are you being so cold towards me? So the minute you start setting boundaries, the parent is going to think, oh God, I'm losing control. They're not listening to me anymore. They're not doing what I want anymore. So setting boundaries is another very important part of the healing journey. And when you first start doing it, it's going to be difficult. It's going to feel very unnatural to you and you are probably going to feel extremely guilty. But it is very important. As an adult, you have every right to have your parents respect your needs. And if they don't get used to it, then just keep setting those boundaries and tell them, I will only talk to you if you respect what I'm saying. Another thing that you will have felt is that you've never belonged anywhere. You probably felt a sense of isolation growing up. And that is not true. Again, you have to work really hard on changing those self-defeating thoughts, these negative thoughts that your parents really drilled into you all the time when you were younger. You deserve happiness. You deserve to go out into that world and be everything that you want to be and have everything that you would like to have. Success, love, friendship, a good job. You deserve the best. So you have to change that inner negative um, chatter that you have. It's this inner critic which you need to slowly um, say no to. Every time you have a negative thought, tell it, stop it, it's not true. Say something to stop it in its tracks. Don't let it overwhelm you. Don't let it ruin your chances to be happy. Now, another thing that you probably will have a lot of is anger. When you realize how destructive your childhood was, when you realize how much damage your parents caused you, you will feel angry. And when you feel angry, you should let that anger out because that is the healthy thing to do. You were probably never able to scream and shout at your parents because if you were angry with your narcissistic parents, you probably got punished. So you were taught not to feel your emotions. You were taught not to express your anger. So find an outlet for that now if you feel angry. Go boxing, go kickboxing, hit a pillow, scream. Do anything that releases this anger because you will not be able to direct this at your parents. So find other outlets. Write a really angry letter as if you were going to send it to your narcissistic parent and then burn it. It is also important to be aware that narcissistic parents usually make their children and even their adult children very reliant on them. Adult children find it very hard to make decisions. They find it very hard to make up their mind about things because they don't trust their own judgment. They don't trust their own instincts because the parent constantly made them doubt themselves. So if you are one of these adult children, then remember that you will have to work on slowly making decisions and doing things for yourself. You have to learn to be in charge of your own life because your parents didn't allow you to. And don't forget, part of narcissistic abuse in a family home is that parents infantilize their children. On one hand, they parentify, so they will give a child way more responsibility than they are able to handle at a young age, but they will also infantilize their child when they're a teenager or a young adult, and they will hold them back from leaving the home because they don't want them to be independent. They don't want them to leave them. They want to be in control. Now there's another big one that is difficult in the recovery journey and that is the feeling of guilt and shame. Narcissistic parents were experts at guilt tripping their children, at shaming their children. And as an adult, you will still be feeling this guilt and this shame. You will have had that ingrained in you so deeply 
that even if you say no to them just one time, you will feel incredibly guilty. And this guilt is a difficult one to um, get rid of completely. You might never be able to get rid of it. But every time it comes up, every time you feel guilty, just say, piss off, leave me alone. When that guilt is there, tell it, I'd have nothing to feel guilty about. And that guilt will be there a lot because your parent will probably continue to make you feel guilty, especially when you set boundaries. Don't forget that. Now, a clear sign that you have not fully accepted that your parent is narcissistic is that you will continue to seek approval from them, that you will continue to want to please them. If that is the case, then you have not fully accepted that they are emotionally handicapped and that they will not change. And that is a very big turning point in your recovery journey. When their opinion doesn't matter to you anymore, then that is when you will know that you have fully accepted that they aren't going to change. And that was one of the things that I noticed. I just didn't care what my parents said anymore. Their opinions didn't matter to me anymore. They didn't affect me anymore. I would listen to them talk and I would feel completely detached be an observer when you talk to your parent. Notice the things that they say. Notice the abusive ways that they talk to you. If you are able to detach and observe them only, then that will also help you a lot on your recovery journey. Now, I really hope this video helped everybody. If you have any questions, then feel free to leave me a comment or send me an email. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please check out my Patreon page. There are a lot of rewards on there. And if you want everything that I talk about in the videos in a PDF form, so you can keep it and maybe use it in a therapy session, then by signing up to my Patreon page and paying as little as $1, you will have access to all of these um, PDFs. You will have access to early YouTube videos and a lot more. Thank you so much. Have a great day wherever you are. Take care of yourselves and I will see you very soon.